I wrote November wind and I, oh, I know. Um, here in Washington state, there's another weather thing. Um, we have really bad winds in November. I mean, there's been Thanksgiving with no power. So you, <laughs> you can imagine. And the um, wind usually blows from the west. So from this way, I don't know if you can see that. Yesterday, the wind was blowing from the east because there's three flags on top. It's a Macy's department store right outside of um, here. I'm going to show one day out my window that the view I'm going to now that I realize I can, you know, can do some stuff with the um, um, camera and stuff and with the movie maker and stuff. I'm going to, um, you know, get get a couple of shots of that view so you guys don't know who every time I turn my head what I'm looking at but um there's flags across there because it's a shopping center or something over there you know those tall department store things and um the flags were blowing yesterday and I kept looking I'm going what the devil's going on and it's because the wind was blowing from the east and we ver and I think that's why it's so cold because we have these things that call pineapple express and it come up it comes up the pacific um ocean and it's like i was talking about before this warm nasty rain just constant constant and i mean and i take vitamin d so but it still kind of gets to you after a while like today the sun was so bright you just felt like doing something I'm like, okay i'm gonna make some videos you know i'm gonna and i went and took care of all my business um some grammatical stuff about the um what i've been going back and noticing as i've been um redoing the um pages that i accidentally erased the finished product and I, the ones you know that i'm doing the um the rewrite on and i noticed what i had done i i had a, i have a habit of doing these flashbacks and what ends up happening is the verb tenses start to get um, confused. He had had, a, you know, I mean, and it get it, they get confused. So what I what I did as I went back this time, I looked, which is something I probably would have caught, but but and I know the editor would have uh, done it. So what I ended up doing is um, going back and just making it a a present tense making it a present tense um, happening, just rewriting it, you know, just changing the few words that it takes. Um, give me a break of nail. That's what I'm doing. Um, and I'm not trying to lose a nail because it's winter time and it, they grow back slower. Um, so actually I went back and just changed some things too. I had a couple of pretty good flash, especially when they flash back and have dialogue. I was afraid it would get confusing. And like I said, I, you know, I, um, write up to my readers. I don't write down to them, but the verb tenses were confusing me and I wrote it, <laughs> you know? So I was like, okay, we need to change this a little bit, you know, some, like some musing once in a while, if somebody's sitting somewhere thinking about, well, you know, remember when I used to do this and we were that and I missed so-and-so and stuff like that, that's fine for a paragraph or two. But I mean, I was tripping. I mean, like, like, five pages of flashback with dialogue and inner flashback and no i looked at that and i'm, I'm pretty glad because I, I know the editor would have seen that um i'm my punctuation is pretty good because what you need to um uh just remember about punctuation is that it's uh it's for two uh it's road like road signs like a comma is like a yellow light and a semicolon is like a blinking yellow light. I mean, you know, it's, it, it's, it's how much you want to pause. And if you want to stop, of course, a period. And then I don't, uh, well, with the second book, I, you know, I have some German words. I have to use some of those weird symbols and crazy stuff. And I had to figure out how to do that. That was hard enough. I was like, oh my gosh, why did I name him that? You know, cause you have to put the little things over things and the little double, um, dots over, you know, stuff. So, but, um, 
But oh yeah, about the punctuation. No, you know, I I don't really triple line, and also too, I I try to be, I try to keep keep, keep the dra- um, grammar as um, well as I can, but I do take some liberties. Um, I start. Um, <laughs> my friend of mine asked me, "Why do you? Can you start a a sentence with and?" And the reason she asked me that was she, her um, native, her uh, first language is German. She came over here and she learned English like from the, you know, from the bottom up, like immersion kind of, you know, English. And um, she, uh, she said, can you do that? And I said, well, in fiction, it's okay. But I mean, it was so funny that she would actually know, you know, the, um, you know, that she would actually, you know, would know that kind of grammar. But, you know, I've realized, I've seen... uh, uh, especially on Facebook, listen, people, for the record and for the people who are watching this in 2114, okay? Y-O-U-R means your, belonging to you. Y-O-U apostrophe R-E means you are. It's the contraction for you are. I see it all the time. I'm going to Y-O-U-R party. And I'm like, come, you can come, you know, come on, you know. So that's one of my, just one of my pet peeves. This is one of my, one of those that gets one. I'm like, come on. You know. Um, so I don't really do, did a lot of that. Um, I didn't really have a lot of, um, the only problem I had actually was with the spell check because I have made up words and wine and sheen and yes and nos, you know, and stuff like that. And the computer keeps, you know, every time. But what I do, I'll tell you a trick. Um, just add it. If you have, like, say, if your characters have a weird name or you're writing science fiction and have some of them weird, crazy names with 12,000 um, um, consonants in them, no vowels, um, just turn it into a word. Just, you know, say... Um, you know, add to dictionary, whatever, and no matter how many times. So now I'm noticing as I, I've added so many um, of my, of the slang kind of, you know, that, um, um, uh, I don't want to say unintelligent kind of talking, but you know, that kind of ain'ts and y'alls and, you know, that kind of, that kind of language that some of the characters use. I found that I ended up just having to just add those words to the dictionary. And then I'm always adding more. Oh, and what I was saying was, as I've been um, going back, on this section that I'm, I'm going keep going back on, I noticed that it was stopping less often. The um, word a uh, spell check was stopping, you know, um, less um, um, often. So let me see here. Uh, I, t- I talked a little bit about being politi- politically, can't even say it, so you know I can't do it, correct. And it's impossible sometimes in a um, historical novel because it comes off as fake. It comes off as um, uh, trying to be PC, you know. Um, And there has to be some name calling and, you know, there has to be, these words have to go back and forth and these things have to go back and forth. And also too, um, a lot of the language that the men use when they speak to the women in terms of, um, uh, he, um, at one point my, um, hero says to my heroine, you know, my, my, um, my lead character that he was upset because she disobeyed him about something. So pretty much he, you know, um, you know, laid down the law you know, and what he, you know, you know, he's kind of, you know, I mean, stuff we wouldn't put, but stuff we wouldn't put up with now, but because of the times and because of the, um, the frontier, like where they live, you know, he pretty much is, um, you know, he pretty much runs the roost or so he thinks, you know, but you know how it always is. Um, also, I told you about the gover- governing body is the, um, is the, um, 
council, the town council. And they, I talked a little bit, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I wish I had a had time. Uh, military, I don't know, even know what that even, I don't even know what that even said. Looks like military town. Oh, it'll come to me in a minute. I have lifestyle. Um, I said healthcare already. Children, well, children back in this time, it was really pretty sad because they, if they made it to a year, it was, you know, it was a miracle. Children just didn't, didn't make it. And of course, the uh, more medical care that a woman was, um, you know, had at her disposal just just like today just like now you know the what i was talking about going over to the uh, veterans administration you know to because that's where my medical is you know free medical you know for the rest of my life so um i get to have the test that i need i get to do the you know the icky cooling that stuff and you know i get to have all those you know uh, procedures that i need you know um, you know, and they remind you of the stuff, you know, and, and, and I have a lot of that in my, at my disposal. That's another reason why, you know, I'm um, pretty optimistic that, you know, I'm going to live a, um, that my, um, um, quality of life is going to be quite good, you know, towards the, towards the end of my life. And I really, I really, really want that. Um, also, let me see. I put something else. Oh no, that's stuff I gotta do. Oh, children. I was talking about children. Yeah, and if if they if they made it to a year, it was you know, especially out in the frontier like that. And um, as cities started in the Victoria um, Victoria uh, era to be dirty, crowded cities, because like these people, most most of the um, the there's a little bit about um charles charleston and there's a little bit about um well new orleans is kind of big city but it's still kind of rural oh and some um a couple of um incidences of something when uh, one of the uh kind of main minor character comes to um boston and he talks about oh my goodness how sophisticated it is look you know two-story office buildings and that kind of thing you know so um it was really into it, you know, those kind of, um, yeah. And that's the, oh, and children, children, oh my gosh. And so, and they were lots and lots of orphans and they would just ship them from the East and, you know, ship them out West and, you know, people would just, you know, take care of them. And, and it was, you know, a lot of, um, women just died in childbirth, you know, and here's this man with, you know, seven kids already and a brand new baby to take care of, you know, the younger, just like in big families to this day, in this day, the younger, the um, older children, when there's a big giant family, older children don't get a chance to be children because they're taking care of siblings as they come along. Same thing with this kind of thing. They thought, you know, if a girl had a chance to go to school, she wasn't going no more after, you know, her mom just had a, a baby and she's four to <laughs> 14, you know, that's the end of your life, honey. You know, you're, you're taking care of babies. I was 11 when my uh, brother was born and that was bad enough, you know, I mean, but you know, I like carrying him around and stuff because I was still at that age, I guess, where I still thought he was cute, you know, and like a little doll. So I used to carry him everywhere I went. Um, I talked about, um, I wrote what kind of men. And I think uh, the, I tried to make all the male characters very strong. And I also, you know, all the good guys, I tried to make them very strong. Um, strong, but I also wanted to show some um, vulnerability in them and that they had um, secrets and that they had dark sides and some of them had done some really bad things and, you know, that they, um, I tried to make them real. That's why I have said like a million times, you know, I think, I think men will really like this book because of the light it puts them in it shows them being weak you know and having moments of being weak and also too some of the bad guys it also shows that um you know when it comes right down to it when you're called upon to take what you um what every man has inside of him you know and if he's challenged um he can 
go in there and find it. I believe every man has it in there, even though the, the, my character is a terrible person. You know, he did some, my, the, my um, villain, he did some terrible things. But um, from, from somewhere from where in, inside him, somewhere inside where he was still a man, even though he'd been a slave and being beat and he was going to get, you know, executed and all this crazy stuff was happening. He's still um, within all of that without a bunch of stupid stuff to um, concern himself with. He had plenty of time to um, go into retrospect you know, and he realizes somewhere, you know, before he has to leave the town that the irony of it is that, um, this was the main town, like as a black guy, you know, he was a runaway slave, but he was, he had ran away by that time, you know, that if he hadn't made some of the choices that he had, that this ironically would have been one of the towns where he could have worked and, you know, made a decent, you know, living and, and been able to raise a family and not, you know, be harassed and have his kids go to school, you know, with the white kids and mingle, you know, free at church and stuff with people. And he realizes this and it's too late, but he still takes that, um, he still takes that with him. He still takes, you know, when he, when he's on this journey and he knows it's pretty much going to be his last, you know, journey, he takes everything that, um, I know it's one secret. I'm not going to say that, but, um, he takes, he, you know, he goes inside himself, you know, cause he's sitting in a cell. So, you know, he, he sits and, and that's another thing too, weather really quick. And then I'm going to do one more, I think. And then that's it. Maybe, no, maybe two more. And then that's it. Cause I'm getting tired. It's time for me to eat something too. I had a big lunch at the VA, but it's fun being around all those guys like that. I think I was the only girl in the uh, dining room. I love it. That's why I like good to do the A, you know, and I always try to, you know, dress and wear something really, really nice and like try to be really, really feminine, you know, just to, you know, the guys, you know, they don't, cause like I was the only girl in that whole big cafeteria, the only one and the guys could go, hey, 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 you know, I don't, I'm not gonna lie. I like that, you know, all that attention. That's cool. So what kind of man, um, how stuff, we talked about verb tenses, we talked about the slang, we talked about the women's rise. Okay, and I, and I even talked about the November win. Let's see what else is on here. Eyebrows, okay, stuff I learned on YouTube, I'm gonna do that in the next one. And I can't remember what in the world did I put military something, but I can't figure out that, what that is. Okay, so anyway, I'm gonna, Okay, I want to at least make it to be 1,800. I wrote, I mean, 18. I can't believe. Translate into non-believable. I don't know what that means. But I think what I meant was what I was saying before about um, having to use a certain style and having to remember what the real race and the real um, male-female dynamic was at that time and to not write it in what how it would go down now, but to write it so, you know, write the way it would actually go in the early 1800s, you know, that, um, you know, what, what a woman's relationship to her husband was, you know, and especially in, um, my, um, um, lead characters, uh, uh, she goes through so many different changes. She's, um, on the plantation where she's born and she's raised. She's a, um, you know, a prized possession. She's a, you know, when she goes to Missouri, she is a homemaker. You know, she's, she becomes a mother. She, um, has the duties of the mistress of the plantation. She does the bookkeeping, all that stuff like that. And then when she goes to new Orleans, she becomes, she transforms herself once again into this educated lady of leisure. She does no housework. She does nothing. All she does is plan parties and go out to parties and have parties at her house and, you know, and go on rides and, you know, go this and take their kids to these birthday parties. And he, you know, and, um, you know, and then she has a circle of friends that are just like her, you know, that are, you know, in interracial, um, relationships and stuff like that. And she, um, for the first time she meets people like, you know, her and, um, the hero, and she really enjoys, you know, doing that kind of thing. And she, um, kind of, um, the one thing she doesn't like is she actually does not have control of her children. Her children go to nannies and stuff, and she has a hard time about that. I'll pick up about that in a minute. 